In this video you will learn how to implement Next.js authentication with Firebase. So first of all the question is what is Firebase and why do we need to use it at all? So we are developing our React application together with Next.js and we really need to store some data on the backend. If we don't know a lot about backend APIs or service, we might want to use a Firebase instead, because the idea is that you can create an account, generate some data through UI, like in the database, and then just use it through a library on your client. So without any additional backend knowledge, you can do that. Our first step is obviously to register on Firebase, and after this click create a project. Let's name our project next and hit continue. Here I want to disable Google Analytics for this project and just click create project. As you can see my project is ready, I am clicking continue and I am redirected to the project overview. Here we are interested in the build part and here we have lots of stuff like for example Firebase database where we can store this data. But this is not a goal of this video, we want to implement authentication as easy as possible. This is why I clicked authentication and here we need to click get started. As you can see here, first we are selecting our sign-in methods and Firebase supports lots of them. So essentially on your website you can implement sign-in with email password, Google, Twitter, Facebook, whatever you need to. For the purpose of this video I will use email and password, here we must enable it and we don't need an email link. I am clicking here save and we successfully configured this sign-in method. Additionally, as you can see here, we have lots of templates, which actually means you can send emails when person is registered, for example, through Firebase. But the interesting part for us is this user step, because here we can create a new user. First of all, we are providing here our email, it will be foo at gmail.com, and let's create password 1234567 I will click add user. And our first user is already created inside our database and we can use it. Now let's look on our application. As you can see here, this is an XGS application with several links. I have here home, login with email and password, register with three fields and logout button. Let's look on our code. Here I have a default root layout with HTML body. Here we have a header. This is exactly where we have all these links and we have our children. Our home component has just an empty div inside, here is our register page where we have this markup for the register and three different states for username, email and password and the empty on submit function. Exactly the same we have inside login, but the only difference is that we have here just an email and password for our form. And the last thing that we have here is a context folder, we will use it later, for now it is completely empty. In order to start using Firebase, we must install this library, this is why npm install Firebase and we are hitting enter. I'm sorry for interruption, but I just wanted to let you know that only 20% of the people who watch my videos are subscribed to the channel. If you really want to continue getting videos and support my channel, consider subscribing, it helps a lot. Now let's jump back into the video. Our next step is to save all API keys from Firebase for our application. But we want to do it in the correct way, because Next.js provides for us an amazing solution to store environment variables. This is why inside our project I can simply create a new file .env.local and this file will be get ignored and here we will have all our variables that we need. In order to get these variables, we first of all must click on the project overview and here as you can see, we must start with getting Firebase inside our application. And here we have iOS Android web, we are interested in web and we must create a new application. I will type here next and click register an application. And this is what they tell us to do in order to start using library. We install a package, we already did that and now we must copy this Firebase config. What I want to do now, I want to use these variables inside my environment variables. As you can see here, inside my env local, I put all our key value pairs with equal sign. And now across the whole application, we can use these variables and be sure that we don't push them in the git repository. 
Our next step is to jump inside next config mjs and here expose all these variables because by default they are only available inside next.js on the backend but we want to use them also on the client. This is why here inside our next config we must create an env property, this is an object and we simply paste all this stuff here which essentially means we are getting all these variables through process env and this is exactly our environment file. And now what I want to do inside our source app, I want to create a new file and name it firebase.js. And here we want to store our firebase config that we just saw. I will just paste all these variables here, we are taking them through process env and now they are available for us and this file will essentially be executed on the client. After this what we want to do inside this file, we want to initialize our firebase application. This is why here let's get a variable app and call here initialize app. And inside we must provide our config, firebase config that we just created. After this we want to create one more variable and we want to export it because we want to use it across the whole application and this is our auth variable. And we are calling here get auth and inside we must provide our app which essentially means we are using app for any Firebase application but as we are using Firebase authentication we must call here a get auth method and provide our application inside. Now this is enough for us to create our first function and essentially the first thing that we want to do is to register our user. This is why here we can write export const register and we know that we are getting here email, then username and password. So we want to return here create user with email and password from Firebase auth. And inside we must first of all provide our auth and then our email comma password. And this is exactly a function which creates a new user account inside Firebase and it returns for us a promise. And as you can see here, we didn't only provide inside email and password, but also our auth. And our auth is exactly this thing, which means this is authentication of Firebase. But most importantly here, you can see that we did not provide a username inside register because it is simply not possible. This method is not for this. But we really want to provide a username. And in order to do that, after registering a user, we can update user profile name. This is why here we can write dot then. We are getting response. And we can call here a function update profile from Firebase. And inside we are providing our response dot user. And here we have an object. Because we want to update our display name. And we are providing inside username which essentially means our register has two promises, one after another. The first one will register user and the second will update a profile. And we're updating here this user that we created with display name username. So our register method is ready, let's use it now. We must open our register page and here we have our on submit function. So here we have access to username, email and password. And instead of console log, we can just call here our register, but it has a promise and it might fail. This is why here I want to remove console and write try catch construction. And inside catch I'm getting an error and I want at least to console log an error that we are getting. And inside try we want to wait when we are calling register and we are passing inside our email, username and password. Which essentially means this register function returns for us a promise, we are providing all our data from the form inside and we don't wait for any response at all. And if we have an error, we simply console log it here. And if we have a success registration, I want to redirect a user, this is why here router.push and we want to redirect a user to the home page. Let's check if it's working. Here I am on register page, I am clicking sign up. As you can see when I'm hitting sign up we are getting an error firebase error out invalid email which is essentially correct because we didn't provide any data. Now let's try to register a user. I want to use a bar with email bar at gmail.com and the password from 1 to 8. I'm hitting sign up and as you can see we were directly redirected to our home page which actually means we successfully registered a user. Let's have a look in our authentication. As you can see here in UI, we see now our bar user that was successfully created. So our registration is working, but what about validation? I'm hitting here sign up, we're getting an error in the console, but that's it. 
this is not enough. What I want to do here, I want to save an error message. So let's create here an error message state and set error message. And here we're using use state and by default we don't have any error, so it is null. Now here inside our catch, I want to call set error message and I want to save inside error.code. And now for example, before our form, I want to render an error message if we have it. So here will be a div with a variable error message inside. Let's check now. I'm reloading the page and I'm hitting sign up. And as you can see here on the top, we rendered out invalid email, which is our backend validation message. Obviously you can apply CSS to it or render another human readable text. Our registry is working, now let's implement login. In order to do that inside our Firebase, we want to create one more method. And here we can export our const login. And we know that we want to get here an email and a password to login a user. In order to do that, we have a method sign in with email and password. And it is from Firebase auth. Inside we must provide our auth, also email and password. And we don't really need to do anything additionally because it will return for us a promise that we can use. Now let's jump back inside the login component and do exactly the same stuff on submit. This is why from register I want to copy the content of submit function and put it here because it is super similar. Additionally to that I want to copy an error message because we also want to show validation and I want to copy the rendering of our error message and just put it here before the form. Instead of register here we want to call a login method that we just created from Firebase and we are providing inside just an email and password and no username and then we are redirecting a user to the home page. In other case we are showing our error message. Let's check if it's working. I am clicking on login and here I am clicking sign in. And here is our message out invalid email. But now let's try to write an email that we just created. It was bar at gmail.com and password from 1 to 8. As you can see we were successfully redirected to the home page which means we are locked in. And now is the most interesting part, we didn't really save our token from the backend inside cookie or local storage, which actually means after page reload we should not be locked in. But essentially this is not true because Firebase did it for you. And if we are opening local storage, all this stuff is not related to the Firebase, we can remove it. Inside session storage we don't have anything and we don't have anything inside cookies. This is totally fine because Firebase is using IndexedDB. And here you can see Firebase Heartbeat database and local storage DB. And here inside there is a database and this is our key with which we are authenticated. Which actually means the only thing that we need to do is call correct method from Firebase to get our user again after page reload. But the main problem is that we want to access this user everywhere across our application, which means we are speaking here about React context. So inside our context folder, let's create new file and name it auth.js. And here I want to create my new context, auth context, by calling create context. And inside I must provide a value. And I just want to save here current user, which will be null by default. Now here I want to export auth provider and here we are getting children because essentially we want to wrap the whole application with our auth provider. And what we want to return here is our auth context dot provider where inside we are providing a value and it will be an object with current user field that we will create right now. And inside we want to render our children which is the whole application. Now the question is what is current user, we want just to save it inside our use state. This is why here let's create current user and set current user. And here we are calling a use state hook and we are providing inside null because by default we are not logged in. Now there is a special function from Firebase which will call our callback when we are getting a user. But this is a side effect, this is why we must put it inside use effect. So here is our use effect and we want to call it on initialize. And now here inside I want to call function on our state changed, 
which is coming from Firebase Auth, and it will notify us that Auth information was changed. And here back we must provide an Auth, and we are getting a callback, and this callback will have a user. So I just want to console log here a user, so you can see it. And the question is from where we are getting our Auth. And essentially our Auth is exported inside Firebase, and we can use it across the whole application. And that this information will either contain null or a user, we can check here that if we are getting a user, we want to set this information inside our current user. So we will get inside lots of different information, we don't need all of that. This is why inside our set current user, I just want to set a clear object with an email, which is user.email and username, and our username is user.displayName. If we don't have a user we want to set inside our current user null, which actually means we are wrapping our whole application with our context provider, and on initialize it has this use effect which hangs there all the time, and it will get this information of the user inside and will update this state, and then this state will be available for us across the whole application. This is why we must jump inside our layout and we can wrap our header and children with our auth provider that we just created. And now inside all our components we have access to this user. Let's first of all reload the page and see what we are getting. And as you can see here after page reload we are getting console log user inside our user fact. And this is exactly this information from that function. And as you can see, we are getting here lots of stuff we don't really need that much, but we are getting here our email that we want to use and our display name. So now we can open our context, remove console log, and the last thing that I want to do here is to create a helper in order to access this context. This is why here let's export our use auth custom hook, which will simply return use context and provide inside our auth context. Now at any place of our application we can use useAuth in order to get current user. And here we want to do that inside our header, because this is a place where we want to know which links to show for the user. So here we can destructure our current user from useAuth, we don't need to provide here anything, and we are getting full access for our current user. Let's check this out, here I want to console log our current user. And as you can see now, this is not the whole information of the user, we have at the beginning null, before we are making an API call, and then we are getting this user information with email and username. We can say that we are rendering home always, but here we need a fragment, and inside fragment we want to render this login and register. But we must render them only when user is not logged in, so it will be current user equals null, and we are rendering this fragment. In other case we are rendering this logout and maybe even a username. This is why here let's write if we have current user, then we want to render a div here with current user dot username. And also additionally we want to render this span with logout. So we have two different cases, either we are not logged in or we are logged in. As you can see after page reload we don't see our links, login and register, but we see that we are logged in as a by user and here is our logout, which essentially means we successfully used our user across the application. Now the last thing that we want to do is log out our user. And in order to do that we must jump back inside our Firebase file, and here on the bottom we can create one more function which will be logout. And it is extremely simple, we don't need to provide here anything, we can just return out and we are good to go. This will return for us a promise and will log our user completely. So we can jump to our header and add here a non-click event, and we want to call here our logout function that we just created from the Firebase. So here I have my user, I am clicking logout, and as you can see directly we are getting null inside console, and we see login and register links, because we are not logged in anymore. So now you know how to implement Firebase authentication inside Next.js, but do you know that React server components are already available inside Next.js, and if you still don't use them, make sure to check this video also.